Hello my little stars and welcome back to If Mafia Fell. Today we're going down the friendship route, aka Lawrence's route. We are going to try and find our brother. So I have asked for additional help from none other than Detective Ted Lawrence. Hello everyone, I'm of course here to help my sister. And he may or may not be a little bit delusional thinking he's my actual brother. Whatever do you mean little sister? <sighs> Long story short, until we can find Lawrence, we are dealing with this teddy bear. Huh? Hmm. Anyway, that being said, let's begin. You are a woman. Doing this again? Huh? Who said that? Who actually is talking to us? It is I, your soul. We haven't even chose a soul yet. Well, too bad. I will be your soul for this. I will be the justice soul. You're going to get annoying, aren't you? No! I will be the judge of that. Um, little sister, why is there a spinning heart? I... I don't... Mm, I don't... Mm, ba -da 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 -da. Let's just move on. Okay, little sister. Anyway, the more help, the better. If someone were to describe you, they would use, she's a woman, her outfit looks nice today, she's going out tonight, you are Miss Twinkle, he calls you ma'am or little lady as much as you dislike it. Hmm. Doing this again though, so is this like referring to the fact that we have played through this more than once, or is it talking about the fact that we have done this as in actual, in world, aka has Frisk actually done this multiple times, your character, the MC has done this, or is it actually talking to me directly? I don't know. Yes, that is correct. Is there anything hidden here? No. Then let's begin. Hello, you. I'm going to... Soul? Soul, really? Is this you? Soul? Um, what? I like to talk to you now. It's not all about you. Oh my god. Hello, you. Hello, hello. Stop answering for me. Darling you, thank god that... Dot, dot. Well, at least the soul is also disturbed. But of course I'm your soul. Oh my god, my soul's a character. Help me. Okay. Uh, you with the yellow soul for justice, of course. Oh god, you with the yellow soul inside of you. You with those beautiful... We're gonna go pink eyes. I can't believe that the soul talks a lot. I'm assuming this is my soul because otherwise I'm very concerned. Because it can't be Kara. Kara is Kara and it can't be me because I'm Frisk. Technically. Sort of. Kind of. I'm, I'm meant to be replacing Frisk because it's me. <laughs> oh god. You is me. Me is you. Oh god. Shut up Twinkle. Oh but why? Shut up. You're not getting to talking this. Little sister, you need to be nice to the soul. Absolutely not. I refuse to be nice to it. Yes, you. Beloved you. You with the long... Oh, good gooey gravy. You with the long... Mm, white hair of yours. Precious you. Sweet you with the smooth ivory skin. Does my soul have... You have nothing to say about this. This is the most disturbing part is when it seems to know that I've got smooth skin because that would imply that it's touched me. M little sister, who exactly has touched you? Um, don't worry about it, Lawrence. Nobody has touched me. Well, at least not in this route. You are so very, very loved. Oh, twinkle. Dot, dot. Wait, what do you mean? Why am I questioning that I'm loved? Why am I even quite Hold on, I'm not that loved? What are you talking about? What is this? What's this pro procrastination? Soul, what are you trying to do? I thought you said you didn't want me talking. Talk, damn you! No. Ah! Such a shame you have to wake up. <laughs> oh my god, the soul's gonna get on my nerves. Mundane. Anything here? You are awake again. Okay, so I've done this before. But how do you know I've done this before? Because I know you. Oh my god. Help me. M little sister, who exactly are you talking to? I'm talking to the floaty yellow soul thingy. The thing that looks like a heart, it's actually a soul. Really? Yeah, it's complicated. You can blame these skeletons. And Ezreal. I mean, Rotsy. Who? 
Who and who? Uh, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. I'm just going to quickly highlight everything to make sure we haven't got any more text hidden anywhere. Okay. So my character, my, my soul apparently wants to say by here again. You pink eyes stare up at the ceiling of your little apartment in the big city. There is a crack that runs from above your bed to the nearest window. The apartment pad view is currently vacant, but when there was an occupant, each step they took would rain ceiling dust from that crack. Little sister, I do not approve of your apartment. I know, but that's not- but also, you're not my brother. You shouldn't tell him off. He's just looking out for you. Oh, hush you. Oh, God. Ugh. I can handle one. Oh, gosh, I'm now starting to miss underswap gaster. Oh, you miss me. Don't get involved. Oh, but I could appear. Do not dare appear. This is already a lot for me to take in. Also, also the fact that it said you're awake again. Does this mean my character has the ability of reset in this world? Does this confirm that my character has reset? Oh, God. Do we have reset? Is that what it's implying? <sighs> oh, it's just the fact that we continuously repeat. But I like how the soul is just like, you're awake again. It's like, I'm so fed up of this tossing, this tossing malarkey that I have to put up with. Tick, tick. It's not the only issue with your apartment. The walls are thin, the floors creak, and there's a good chance of your window getting stuck every time you open it. The stove only works half of the time, and more than once your kitchen faucet has popped off and hosed you down. It's a wreck, and you know it. Anyone who walks in would know it is. I definitely know it is from your description alone, little sister. Yeah, it's kind of a shitty apartment. No one asked for your opinion. I was just giving my input. Not you, the soul. Oh... Hee <laughs> hee. Can he not hear you? Actually, no, he can't hear me. Only you can. Isn't that fun? No, that's terrible. I already despise you. Oh, well, that's a shame because that means you hate yourself. <gasps> I mean, you hate pretty much almost all the MCs so far. That's not entirely true. You hate a majority. Well... Can you really judge me for that? Yes. Oh, poo. Moving on, because we need to get through this regardless. Um, let's see. With the money you make, you can you have to make do with what options you have. As it stands, you live in a studio apartment on the sea side of the city. Little sister, that is not an appropriate place for someone like you to live. I know, but it was my only option at the time. Also, why am I you know, indulging your delusions of being my brother. Because I am your brother. Oh, God. It's okay. I'm here for you. Oh, you're not helping at all. Just be quiet and just float there and be cute. Oh, my God, you call me cute. Ah! Anyway, um, you do... You do have some luck. The apartment above you and beside you are empty, so you don't have to worry much about the noise. You also have been able to keep it well furnished to your taste. A lot of the people who left the apartment complex would leave behind furniture and the landlord gave it away for free. That plus thrifting and very lucky sales. So I actually asked before what thrifting was. It's the UK's equivalent to a charity shop where people bring stuff in for them to sell. Um, so yeah. Reusing, people. Anyway... You look over at your alarm clock on your nightstand. It's a special clock. I'm really curious now if these special clocks have a relevance. Does this hint to the fact that because this is a magical pocket watch, where did grandfather get it from? Does he have like connections with anyone? Where would he get a magical pocket watch? Is this just something he just happened to have? Is this important because a pocket watch is mentioned later on? I'm just curious. Does grandpa... Does Grandpa have a connection to anything in the plot? Or is it, is it just the random thought that we have this magical pocket watch? That it's just a cute little quirky trinket that we have? Who knows? Hush! It was a rhetorical question, not one to be answered by you, but by Dark Petals. Who's Dark Petals? Oh, you really know nothing. I know a lot! Um, Twinkle, it honestly just looks like you're fighting with yourself. I'm sorry. 
I was fighting with the soul. Don't fight with yourself. It's a special clock, one of very few magical items you own. It was a gift from your late grandfather many years ago, along with a matching magical pocket watch. Both of them are sturdy black and have a special enchantment. The faces are black with their numbers in white, but if you touch them, they display a magical reading instead. You reach and touch your alarm clock and it reads 6.17am. You do not work for several more hours, so you have time, but you find it difficult to break your habit of waking up around this time. It's been years since you needed to, yet you can't stop. You get up without issue, instantly awake because we need to be on the ball, literally. We need to be up, like, boom, 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 anything happens straight out of bed, no excuses. Yeah. Okay, so, let's just make sure... Soul doesn't say anything here, good. Soul is silent. I could sit harsh. You're always woken up without issues. You get out of bed and immediately turn around to make your bed. Another habit instilled into you. You smooth the blankets and prop up the pillows. Your bed is shoved in the corner of the room underneath the largest window in your flat. And you have a single screen divider to separate your so-called bedroom from the rest of the studio. At the foot of your bed is your dresser, well-worn and chipped. Your eyes flicker up to the view outside the window. This window faces north and you can see the city every time you... You peek out. There is enough of a gap between the buildings that you can get sunlight most of the day. And with your bed made, you look at your apartment. Okay, so what kind of apartment do you want? I want minimalistic. Mmm, something tranquil. Huh. Some of plants? Absolutely not. Any other city apartment? Thing is, I always go with, like, cosy because I'm a really cosy person. Wow, what's the point of asking us for opinions if you're not even to take them? Because I'm definitely not asking you, Soul. You've got way too much to say. Oh god, you speak by you. What do you mean? I'm just the words of wisdom. No kidding. Splashes of soft pink, creams and touches of green pop against your grey coloured walls. You have several hand-knitted blankets and the pillows folded on your couch and coffee table. All your lights emanate a gentle golden glow that casts your whole apartment in a cosy warmth. In here you can forget all about the city you live. No, the city you survive in. <coughs> city? Why don't you say the name of the city? Because that mountain... Mm-mm, bad things happen to those who are involved with that mountain. Or anything involving that name. It is a cursed name. You call it curse, I just call it adventurous. Adventurous? What on the earth? I mean, you go on an adventure and you find a lot of smexy skellies and other smexy characters. Oh my god, I'm... Shush! Huh? Not you! The soul! Anyway, it is the second largest city in the country. It rests at the foot of that wretched mountain and stretches out to the ocean. The city is constantly growing with new citizens and companies arriving every week. Tourists visiting will swear up and down it's the prettiest city in all of Delta. That's not entirely wrong. It is a beautiful city. Far as cities go, the streets are kept clean and most of the city's main functions run on magical crystals instead of electricity or gas. So the air always smells nice. Hmm, there's a clue. What do you mean, little sister? The Dromir supply the city with crystals. Without it, the city would stop functioning. The magical crystals run the electricity, the gas, and so on. The city can't function without the crystals that the Dromir supply. Meaning pretty much they're in control of all of that. All of the streets are paved with black metal lampposts on every corner. There's even a pretty park you visit often. With your bed made, you move to your small kitchen. You put on the kettle and prepare to make your morning drink. A cup of... We're going to go with milk chocolate, as always, but that would mean if the humans decided to aggravate or go after the Dremers or even try to go after, like, the mining supply, they would have... The, the Dremers could easily pull the pug and just say no more crystals to the people and everything would stop running. If Because the whole entire freaking city is running on these damn crystals. The city is, like literally survives on these things. So what exactly do the Dremers get 
out of that the agreement because they supply the city with the crystal so what do they get out of it for supplying it because i know the city gets crystals but what do they get what is their end of the deal what do they get either way you pour the drink in your yellow mug and take a seat at your tiny kitchen table you drink it slowly outside you hear the city waking up it's never quiet at night not like out in the country or anything but the noises change. At night you can hear music, laughter, screams, and of course gunshots, because it'd be weird if we don't. Hmm. In the day you hear cars, conversation, children playing in shops, opening up, and sometimes you hear gunshots. When you finish your drink, you rinse out your mug in the sink. There's a window above your sink that you keep open. You're on the seventh floor and there's no fire escape on this side of the building. Really weird that there's no fire escape on this side, but whatever. You're reasonably confident no one will be climbing through it. What's the point in climbing through it? Winger Dean's can just shortcut in, Sans can shortcut in, Papyrus can shortcut in, and freaking Ezreal can just float up. You don't need the stairs. You can just use magic to get in. Either way, even if they could scale it, it was a tight fit. Oh, trust me, Ezreal had his methods of getting in. You have a hanging flower basket outside. It was left there by the previous owner when moved in. Okay, so this technically hints then that this was Dr. Rose's apartment because it was left by the previous owner. They left those flowers there. How do we know for a fact that the previous owner left the flowers there? How do we know that? Because it could have been the owners before that. Why does our character say, as a matter of fact, that it was the previous owners? It already had soil, but there was no flowers. Not until you came in. You never touched the basket. Somehow, in your sp first spring here, yellow roses grew. They took up the entire basket and bloomed with cheerful vibrancy. They do not require much care. It's almost magical how easy they are to take care of. They bloom with or without your intervention, and they come back every scream. Yellow roses. It's, doc it's the doctor's favourite. Or maybe it's the opposite. How do I know that? How does our soul know that? Do they not like yellow roses? Why don't they like them? It's the doctor's favourite. Hmm. We met the doctor before then. But how does. Why does our soul know that? Because I'm different from you. I remember things that you don't. Did something happen to me? Or are these just clues? But why does it mean. Or maybe it is the opposite. They are. What does it mean? So maybe the yellow roses aren't their favourite? They hate, maybe they associate the yellow roses with something they don't like. Okay, I'm, I'm really curious now. Why does it say these two things? It says it's the doctor's favorite or maybe it's the opposite. Hmm. Cause roses aren't considered, yellow roses aren't considered like a death flower or anything. Well, definitely didn't become my favourite, but still. While pretty to admire, it's not your favourite flower. I'm going to just quickly zoom down. Your favourite flower is actually a red poppy, because poppies can be made to make poisons. <laughs> and also I have a kitty named Poppy, so we're going to go with Poppy. Okay. He took that away from you. Who took what away from me? Wait, what? Who did? Huh? Who took my flowers from me? What do you mean? Who's he? Your favorite flower is actually red poppy. He took that away from you. So, explain. Um, I don't want to. You were talky talky before, now you don't want to. Well, sister, are you all right? No, I'm confused. Why do we know for a fact that the previous owner left the basket? Why does our soul hint that? We did we already meet Dr. Rose? Have we died by Dr. Rose already in this? What the hell happened? He took it from us. Who? Dr. Rose? Who? 
our, our dad? Who's he? There's too many male characters for me to point blame at. Gosh darn it all. A cool breeze blows through your window and ruffles your white hair. On the wind, you catch the subtle floral scent of your roses. You set your mug on the drying rack beside your skin, your sink. Not your skin. Ugh! That would have been really morbidly disturbing if it was skin. <laughs> Anyway, it's time to continue getting ready. You need to stretch. You move out to the living room and there's only just enough space for you to stretch without banging on the furniture. You do your morning stretches and you have to go for your run soon. It's not a choice. You always have to be ready to run. You have to keep yourself safe, okay? So do you... You know? So do you, you know. You promised. You promised you would. What? Hmm. This is getting mysterious. <laughs> what is this? You start putting on men's clothes. I'm going to quickly highlight again and see if we got any hidden messages. We don't on here, so we should be okay. No, we don't. We've got some in bay here. Women don't go running after all. Not in this city. Not outside of a school. Not alone. Why does it specifically say not outside of a school? I don't even work at a school, so why would I even bring up school? Do people, like, run a lot <laughs> around here? You pin your hair up into an old cap and you bind your chest enough to help hide it, but it's not too tight you won't be able to breathe. You slip on a pair of brown pants and a loose-fitting t-shirt. These clothes used to belong to your brother. He wore them on the morning job you took together when he was training in the police academy years ago. Feels like forever ago. Well, yeah, it was technically, what was it, like years ago? Because he disappeared like five years ago and we don't know, like... And he wasn't at the police academy for very long, was he? Now only you wear them. It's not a perfect disguise. Anyone who looks closely could tell you're a woman, but you don't plan to stay put long enough to let that happen. You run because you need to make sure you can run. You wear men's clothes who are less of a target to pick. This city that you survive in is lethal as it is pretty. It's not the government or the police. That's bull, that's bull poop right now. We, the police are in control of something. It's freaking all of them. It's not a goddamn cover up. This whole entire city is malarkey bull poop. Little sister, you can't say stuff like that without evidence. I mean it. It's a freaking conspiracy. It's a freaking cover up. Oh, God. It's not the government or police in control of it. It's the gangs, the mafias. I freaking highly doubt they're in control of a lot of this, right? It seems to be everything. When you think you know who's behind it all, suddenly a new clue drops and you're like, what? Either way. They don't normally pick public places like the park you run through, but your brother always told you the best fight is the one you avoid. A woman running by herself seems far easier target than a young man. You slip on your shoes and go. That is very true, because normally, you know, women, we're like more dainty and fragile. We seem to be like easier targets, unless of course you're a woman who's learned how to freaking fight back. Oh my goodness. So, do you have anything else you want to add? I just like adding to the confusion. I notice. Hmm. Are you alright? Yes, I'm fine. I'm just going a little insane. It's completely fine. It's a nice morning. Okay, let's have a look. Wait. I had to check. There's a lot down here. Okay. The park is a 10 minute jog away. It's not the main park in the city, just a small one with a little pond. It's popular enough that you're unlikely to be harassed there, and it's close enough that you can run home if you need to. It's why you picked it. You do five laps around, then circle home. It's time for a breakfast. A glance at the clock shows you you have a few more hours until you have to go to work. So we're gonna eat yogurt and fruit. Yum. Okay, just a quick look through. Anything at all hidden? No. Good. Keep it that way. Huh, but I like to drop things. Hush, soul. You can just spin there and look cute, but don't do anything. 
it's me and my brother's time to- I, I mean, Detective Ted Lawrence. The fact that you're also a factor in this now bothers me. M whatever do you mean? I've done nothing. Stop talking like my brother. No. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yum. You clean off your plate, wash, and then set it on the drawing rack. It's time to start getting ready for work. You take a... You know what? I need a bubbly bath at this rate. And use your favorite soap so you smell like... Mm, vanilla, orange blossom, so... You know what? We'll just we'll just go with um, roses. You scrub your hair thoroughly. You use your yellow towel to dry yourself. When you get out, your ivory skin feels soft and smooth under your touch. You've done a good job of taking care of yourself. That isn't easy. Um, it's hard, but you know it's worth it. So you keep it up. Once dried off, it's time to get dressed. I'm gonna wear a floral dress. Anything a tear had done at all. Like, I'm just gonna like highlight everything. Your favorite color is yellow, so most of your dresses are in that, but you do have a few other options. In addition to dress, to your dress, you wear a um, pair of white gloves. Now that you're dressed, it's time to finish your hair. Due to its length, you have a lot of options. Don't matter, we're pinning up with a flower because apparently there is stuff hidden and I need to find everything. You pin the flower in it, Happy with the final results, you slip on your pumps, all set. Time to go to work. You leave your apartment, locking the door behind you. It's a 30 minute walk from your apartment to where you work. It's a route you are familiar with, as it's what you've been taking for four years. Cause again, remember, Lawrence has been missing for five. Whatever you're talking about, little sister, I'm right here. The other Lawrence, the Lawrence that is not a teddy bear. Oh, okay. Oh boy, this is going to be one heck of an adventure now. <laughs> Don't you laugh. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway. Hmm. Time to you leave your apartment locking the door behind you. It's a 30 minute work walk from your apartment to where you work. It's a route you're familiar with, and is what you've been taking for four years. You move briskly, your shoes clicking against the paved sidewalk. You work in an upscale bar named the Black Swan. You work as a singer. Okay, so do you wanna... Why? Why? Why even? Why is this necessary? Because... Oh, you are a little poop nugget. What do you mean? I'm your soul. I don't freaking care. I would strangle you. What? You are just making me more anxious. Anyway, you make good money with it too. You got the voice of an angel, or so you've been told. But of course, little sister, I love when you sing. I am not singing during this. You're not sure about that, but you do know you can sing well. When you get up on stage, all the, your worries melt away. For those few blissful hours, you can sing whatever you want and the audience will be pleased. It doesn't hurt that people find you pretty to look at, so they'll even leave you tips. You don't work long hours, rarely more than six, but you make enough off of that alone to survive. Which is good. You need money. Everyone in the city needs money. The money you make now would have been enough to buy your own house in the country. Here though, <laughs> the sarcasm, not so much. Little soul, really? <laughs> you like it though. You like your co-workers and you like your boss. The customers can get rowdy sometimes, but you're never alone in dealing with them. Look, don't touch. That's what the boss warns all of his customers, even the important ones. He and his food are well liked enough that he can get away with it too. As long as you play nice, you're safe there. And you need to be there. It's one of the few places in the city where the highest members of all the mafias will visit due to its neutral ground. Yeah, while the neutral ground is still there. It's the best lead you have to find your brother. Okay then, so you want to throw out something? No? Oh good, my soul has nothing to put here. Great, fantastic. Keep quiet. You should really think Sidra about being nice to me. Absolutely not. You know he's here somewhere. 
You simply don't know where. And that's the issue. But little sister, I'm right here. Yeah, Ted Lawrence is right there. You and I both know I'm not talking about the teddy bear version. Yeah, but he's still your brother. Oh my god, hush you. Your brother went missing five years ago, and you have very little to go on. Your only lead brought you to the city. And so in the city, you will remain until you find your next clue. Or until you find him, Lawrence. So from what we can understand, a few years ago, Lawrence was following a lead and it brought him to the city. And then after that, he just vanished without a trace. So it's a big cover up. The sun shines above the city, casting everything in a bright, warm light. Okay, we're going to just quickly shama shama down here. Anything from said soul? Nothing? Nothing? Oh, soul is being very well behaved at the moment. <clears throat> city hasn't changed since the day you moved here. It's like many other cities. It's a jungle of asphalt, concrete, and metal. All the sidewalks are paved, but they show cracks in your neighborhood. The tiny pops of green grass that manage to poke through are always burnt away by the unrelenting sun in the summer. The skyscrapers block the view of the ocean, and if you go far enough into the city, you even lose sight of the mountain in the back. Thank goodness. They reach high into the sky with their achromatic colors and cast much of the city in shade when the sun rises or sets. Street lights will come will come on early in the day to the shadows casted by these massive buildings. Without the lamppost, the city would be in total darkness most of the time. Those lights dot every single street and corner and are one of the few things consistently well tamed by the government. Light because they're a gift by the Dramir family. Again, there's something else. They give us crystals to run the city, but they also give us lights to light up the city. Hmm. And they dot every single corner. I'm curious if, okay, huge stress here. What if secretly the Dramir family, like there's something like cameras, hidden cameras inside the lights, dotting every street and they're monitoring everything going on? That would be hilariously funny and they'd be so alphas. Little sister, I know, I know, but it's just, I was just thinking it was like funny because alphas always had cameras hidden around the place. There are three families in this city, you don't upset. One, the Vice City family, aka the Vice, a family of mafia who are the biggest providers of weapons and drugs to the city, usually in the same night. So, if you want weapons or drugs, you go there. Okay. Two, the Birches family, aka the Birch family, the tree people, I just call them. A family of mafia who own all the brothels and ports. They deal with a lot of smuggling, and if rumors are to believe that they aren't just smuggling items, they're smuggling people. We don't know if they also smuggle monsters, though, but we definitely know they smuggle people. Three, the Dramir family, the royal monster family who live inside the mountain. They run the Fell Kingdom and are the largest suppliers of magic crystals in all of Delta. Yeah, so they supply not just these crystals to the city, they, they supply it all over Delta. So they're very, very, like, influential. These cities run so- these crystals run so much of what is around us. So if they wanted, they could just stop them all together and then humanity kind of can't function. It's like if you took the internet away from a majority of people. If you took their phones away, they freak out. Officially and probably they're- are seen as a benevolent family, but why are they seen as benevolent? They donate a lot to make the city look nice, and the Queen runs a charity for the orphans, orphanages. Unofficially, well, the math, unofficially, is, is it saying unofficially? She runs a charity, is it like unofficially or is this something else? Unofficially, well, Matthews don't touch the Dramir family no matter how wealthy they can become if they hit their mining operation. Again, like I said before, it's stupid to try and attack a monster. The monsters are going to overpower you. There's a reason for it. Either the Dramirs have some sway over the Matthews or they scare them enough that no amount of money is worth going against them. What if it's the Deathly Beast? What if that's why? What if the Dramir family has the death of the beast? Is it an amalgamation? I would not be surprised if it's like a freaking amalgamation or something. Either way. That would be like one of the few things I, I believe would be the reason why they wouldn't dare go against the Dramir if they had like a super weapon or like a giant monster that they're just like, no, 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 no. That and because, you know, they tiny got the whole city in the palm of their fluffy hands. 
Beside the city where you live, you encounter the Vi group most of the often. They are kind of uniformal members with black suit hats with a green band with a V inside of insignia into it. You've, if you see anyone with that hat, you know it's best to keep on walking. When it's night, the city transforms. Okay, we're just gonna quickly shimmy, 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 shimmy. Nothing. Okay, so has nothing to add here. That's okay. There's a warmth in the day, and you like it at noon before the sun dips and the shadows cover everything at night. At night, the city is alive. Terrifyingly beautiful, the buildings that once loomed over you in the day are lit up like fireflies in summer. Each window a different light and hardly ever the same spot stays lit. People come and go to and from, work, home, events and whatever keeps everything in a constant movement. Jazz and swing music blares through the streets. The lampposts chase away the harsher shadows. Men and women group together to have fun. They laugh and scream and cry out into the night or are part of like the terrible, terrible dark things that we're not gonna mention just yet. There are a lot of raids and I don't mean party raids. Someone might be having an awful, horrible, traumatic experience that may or may not leave them forever scarred to the point that they went home crying to their daddy. But in the same night, someone else is having the best time of their lives. In this city, that is a constant truth. You're never truly safe here. You always have to be aware of your surroundings and mindful of the families. But you can't deny the loveliness of the city. It's a fatal attraction. You love it as much as you hate it. And even when you do find Lawrence, you will, you will, you will. You're not sure you want to leave. Maybe. Excuse you? No, we're leaving. Oh, but I like it here. I don't know. I think I'd rather go back to Rune City. You know, I, I want to see Rune City. Rune City sounds a lot safer than the malarkey we're dealing with here. So, um... You always want to go to school. Hmm, country. Okay, I'm gonna notice... Anything? No. What? What? <laughs> What? Why is his name here? Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Wait. You really do. In your fucker was paced. You quickly glance at the animated voice and you see a group of men in the suits resting in an alleyway. They smoke their cigarettes emanating a trail of smoke with each wave of their hand. You note that their suit hats have a green band on them which tell you they are a part of the Vi family. The Vi family runs your section of the neighbourhood. It's them that you have to pay a so-called protection fee to. Unfortunately, this alley is a need to go through to get to work. There's construction on the main road and you'd rather not take a detour or else you could end up in the sticks. And that would be even worse than having to deal with these lot. I'm not sure. They're not good looking. Sorry. What? I'm a magnet for the attractive skellies. None of these are the attractive skellies. I don't care. They're definitely not the romantic Prince Fluffball. Oh my god. What happened? Don't ask. You recognise a couple of faces. They go to the Black Swan often enough for you to know their faces, but not so often to know their names. Can skeletons even get mad? Questions one of them. They're all bones, aren't they? That's part of them to get pissed. The thing is, skeletons may be all bones, but the thing is you're dealing with skeleton monsters. They don't have the same anatomy, per se. They're not just skeletons. They, a skeleton is a dead person. <laughs> it's like what becomes of your body when you're dead and everything's gone away off of you. That's a skeleton. It's like the the freaking bones that make up your body. Now a skeleton monster is not the same thing because when they die they turn to dust. But who am I to correct a drunken man in this moment? I'll probably get beaten up if I try. One of them takes a drag. <sighs> who the fuck should I know? All I'm saying is this fucker was mad. Turned red. Shit. I almost did, says the first one. And they all laugh. He didn't say anything though. No, no, no. He just grabbed Mikey by the back of his head and then slammed him into the table. His brain was like all over the place. Definitely 100% sans. N no denying. It was sans. Huh? I heard you mention my name. We're just listening to these people. This man who had an experience with you. 
Uh, what can I say? So what was the deal? I can't go telling you anything. Just keep reading. Wait, you're not gonna flirt with me, you're just gonna leave? You normally tell me off for it. Who is this? Ah, oh, quickly, sounds leave. <laughs> okay. Ooh, remember me, skelly man? Shut up, soul. Wait, why is there a spinning soul? You can actually see the soul. Of course I can. I'm a skeleton monster, so. Okay, we're not complicating this anymore. Sounds go away. All right, call me if you need me. So Mikey's out there bleeding his brains like all over the table and some cockeyed fucker thought it'd be good to rag the skelly. No shit, who was it? Johnny, says the first one, and the whole group groan. Oh, bloody Johnny. The skelly flips his wig and it's over for an hour. Johnny and Mikey are like proudly just jammed by this point. Keep in mind, this fucker didn't use any magic, just like his fists. He shakes his head. Then the other one comes in. Other one? He groans. I'm not drunk enough to rehash that. Come on, let's get some more drinks in ya, says another. Fucking deal went to hell, he bemoans as his companions start to hard him down the alleyway. Now my boss is going to have to step in. My ass is roasted. We can drink to that power, drink to your ultimate demise. They leave. You are free to continue. Sans? Why does my soul think that? Have I met Sans? Pre this just makes me really think that we have reset before that something has happened we have met these characters before why was this just hinting at the fact that it's sans just to let me know that it's sans because i know for a fact this is sans because it sounds like sans is mo sans is the most the more physical violent one he's like more physical in terms of the three skeleton brothers that it could be papyrus won't he's like more patient wingedings honestly doesn't like going like all handsy just no mm -mm. that's just he doesn't like the messy way he's sophisticated he has his preference he don't want to get you know brain masher and guts on him i mean ew. <laughs> so so how come you said san it's just a hint to probably let you know or maybe there's more to it sister do you know this sans person uh yes can i meet him i uh uh <laughs> i don't know would it i mean that was probably fine with meeting them as long as we don't interrupt winging things when he's sleeping right oh my god i just imagine like lawrence accidentally comes comes over meets the whole family and accidentally makes a noise when wingadings is sleeping because you know you'll meet the two brothers first they all look in horror suddenly everybody gets dropped in the void and he's just like what was that that's what happens when you wake up our older brother i'm sorry human that's not really what i was expecting your first experience meeting our brother would be what have i told you all about waking me up we're sorry brother we didn't even get to warn lawrence about your sleeping habits Anyway, moving on. You arrive at the Black Swan. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly shimmy, 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 shimmy. Nothing. Nothing here. I once you're greeted by the smell of alcohol and cigars. Oh, little sister, is this your workspace? Yes, this is actually where I work. It's called the Black Swan. So, again, though, I am curious. Does Sands and Papyrus actually own? Um, a part of like the district. Do they en actually end up owning part of the district in this version? Because I don't actually know if they own it. Like, in sooner or later you'll be mine. You actually have to pay like the protection fee to them. And I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, I know that they own the Black Swan though. Well, Papyrus technically does. I wouldn't say Sans does. You see your co-workers bustling about as they get ready to open. You have an earlier shift that day. You usually work the evening to night shift, but today you're covering two shifts. You don't normally wait on tables, but you know how to. Besides, the boss has provided free meals for those working. Hey, Twinkle greets Anna. She's a bubbly young waitress who, who only works the day shift. A young mother who wants to be home at night for her children. You're working a double. Again, I hope nothing happens to any of my co-workers. Anna, Wendy, Jennifer. Don't want anything to happen to them. You confirm you are. Oh, 
Oh, Kenny, I love it we're on the same shift. Wendy is so lucky to always have you, she says happily. Who are you covering for? You say it's for Ray. <sighs> Less good for that. You're covering the back tables then, she says with a frown. The back tables are for the VIPs. The tip money is great, but the personalities are usually less so. That's fine with you. More money. Call me if you need any help, she says. I'll come over in a jiffy. You give her a thanks and then head to the back room to change your uniform. This is how you spend your day. Okay. Gonna just, um, oh. Alright. There's definitely something here for me. When you get off work, it's late into the night. Hold on, little sister. You can't just walk home alone. What do you mean? Yeah, I lit it's literally, it says here, you walk home alone. But that's dangerous. What if you get mugged? What if you get attacked? You need to believe in the buddy system. I told you to keep it safe. Yeah, but it's not like I have anyone that would, like, would walk home the same time as me and lives in the same apartment, Lawrence. Teddy, Detective Ted Lawrence. Hehe, <laughs> you called him Lawrence. Oh, shut up. Let's do this. When you get off work, it is late into the night. Little sister, you better not be walking home alone. But it says here, you walk home alone, listening to the sounds of the city that never sleeps. Another day has gone by, and you listen to the conversation between the customers, hoping for a sliver of information, but you are disappointed every time. You won't be deterred. You will save him. So, wait, is this confirming my brother is when you will save him? There's no option here. We are going to save him. We're going to fight him. We're going to save him. There's no ifs, there's no buts, there's no nada. We are doing this. Right? Exactly, because otherwise you'll never get rid of me and I'll always be here every step of the way annoying you. Oh my god, Lawrence, where are you? I'm right here, little sister. Not you! Oh, this is getting frustrating. Tell me about it. You don't get an opinion in this. What do you mean? I'm being helpful. I'm helping with the commentary. Mm. Um, little sister, I still do not like the fact that you're going home alone, though. That's understandable. It's never a good idea to go home alone, least of all in a city that's as dangerous as the one we're in. Exactly. Why don't you get one of your friends to come with you? Wouldn't that also put them in danger? They don't live in the same apartment as me on the same area. And then they'd have to walk back home alone themselves and risk getting attacked, mugged, or hurt. True. Is there really no one you can turn to? No. Oh dear. Not unless I find Lawrence. But I'm right here. The other Lawrence. <laughs> oh hush so. Anyway, it's almost time to put up new posters. You re-enter your apartment and you lock the door behind you. Not that it matters. It's a flimsy piece of wood in a world of monsters and guns and magic. It won't really keep you safe. It's only there to bite you time so you can run. Trust me, it's not going to do much because you've got winged Danes who can just pop in whenever he wants. Sons who can just pop in whenever he wants. Papyrus who can pop in whenever he wants. Ezreal who can just pop in whenever he wants and float up. You know? In a world of magic, you're never truly safe. Also, it's a tiny, flimsy wooden doll. Where are you supposed to run to? There's no fire escape. There is no way out to that apartment room. Anyway. You change into a short night dress and take a seat. You have to keep yourself safe, okay? You change into a short night dress and take a seat on your couch. The clock now reads... 11.55 p.m. It's time to go to sleep and you think you'll go to bed, wake up and repeat. This is, has been your life for the past five years. Oh dear. Mundane. You wish something would change. Anything. All you do is wait and wait and wait for some kind of clue for something to happen. It's slowly driving you insane. You have to keep yourself safe, okay? Yes, brother, but the same thing with you. You have to keep yourself safe until we can find you. You promise. You promise him. But this dreary weight is tripping away what sound as you managed to recover from your childhood. Ugh, we don't talk about that wretched childhood. 
You lay back in your bed and stare up at the crack in your ceiling. You want friendship. Because this is the friendship route. We want Lawrence. Just a highlight. Nothing here, okay? Companionship. Friendship. Comfort. You do desperately need comfort after five years of trying to find him. Well, four years technically is coming here, but still. First you have to like deal with the grief and mourning of like your brother just up and vanishing. Then this stuff happened with Robert. And then trying to do it all on your own. Like how is it, how the mentality, the mental state of my character. My god. My soul. Yes? Wait, do you actually care about me now? I do care a little bit. How are you coping? Terrible. I'm so worried. Me too. It's okay, little sister. We can't give up. Not yet. We'll never give up. Yeah! You want someone to talk to. Your brother was your whole world, and with him gone, you you have no one. You miss him. You miss company. You close your eyes and you make a wish in your dreams. Wow. N no. <laughs> Daisy. It's okay, Daisy. I'm not... Uh, uh, <laughs> No one to talk to. What? What is Daisy like invisible to you, MC? But then again, I mean, there's only like so long, like so much Daisy can do. But Daisy understands though, so couldn't you? Yeah, and you have work, and you made friends. But I guess in a sense, even with like all those people around you, you still feel alone. Because you live alone in an apartment in a dodgy side of town. You're having to like dodge bullets every time. It gets very lonely. You make a wish in your dreams. And here we go. That was chapter one. So we saw some lot of hidden messages there. So. Why did my soul say sans? Was that just for me, uh, like out of, out of like the Holy Spirit to low hinting that it's probably sans? Like was that a clue for me? as like the player or was that a clue for my character see hmm. Hmm. there was quite a bit in there the dream family hold a lot of the cards they supply crystals to the city they give us lights hmm but it doesn't say like what they got from that deal i want to know like what did they get what did they benefit from because, yeah, letting monsters come back in the cities and stuff. Is that what it was? I highly freaking doubt it. The monsters could easily just make the humans let them in. So what did they get? And I really do think most likely probably the Dremere family has probably got the Deathless Beast or something. Like, why else would the mafias, like, not want to deal with them? They got the opportunity of a lifetime to literally cash in on the biggest thing being the magical crystals if they hit the mine yet they're too scared what why they'd risk almost anything to make it big cash right so why and clearly obviously we know for a fact that in this particular world they're not fond of monsters they'll hire monsters sure but that doesn't mean they like monsters hmm what could it all mean? There was quite a few clues in there. There was quite there was quite a lot. I'm really glad that I went back, redid this episode to include all the hidden messages. It's so really added. And well done, Soul. Huh? You can stay. Really? Yes, you can be a main character with us. <gasps> I get to stay here on the bottom? You'll also get to be in the thumbnail. Really? Yes. <gasps> I feel honored. But you'll only be in this series. Eh! I feel sad now. I know. Though I am curious now if maybe the romance arts also have hidden messages, but I'll have to check. So, pals, um, can you tell me on Discord that do the romance arts also have hidden messages? Can I, does anybody who's actually played through this know that the romance arts have hidden messages? If I need to go back and actually do those as well. Either way, we're gonna now. Check out some of the clues with Northern Detective Ted Lawrence, and then I will continue on through chapter two. All right, so that's a wrap for now.
let's head on off and see what happens. Hello there, fellow detectives. You want to help me solve this? Uh, yes, sure. Also, who are you talking to? I'm talking to all the little detectives out there. Or just people who may be interested in wanting to help us solve this case. Oh, great. Yay. Hi, everyone. Ignore the cell. Mm, we could use everybody's help, including your soul. Little sister. Oh, do we have to? Of course. You have the best intuition. I'm not so sure about that. Anyway, where is the first clue we're going to take a look at today? We're going to take a look at our missing person. Detective Lawrence M. Holmes. Is that his true last name? No. He said that we should take somebody else's name when we came to the city. I mean, he told his sister that they should take somebody else's last name when they came to the city. <laughs> so that way then if anybody came looking for them, they would find someone else. Hmm. Smart tactic, but also concerning. So, let's read then. You do realize that the name is similar to, like, Sherlock Holmes, right? Yes, he really liked reading Sherlock Holmes. Lawrence is your older brother by five years. Whose older brother? Uh, his little sister's older brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, how about I just read as it is, huh? Okay, fine. Read as it is, little sister. Okay. Lawrence is your older brother by five years. He loves you dearly and you love him. He has your peony colored eyes, ivory skin, and white hair. He keeps it short and neatly combed, which makes sense because of like previous living conditions went through childhood and as well as like what he decided to do later on, you know, as, as a job, you know. He wanted to look presentable. When the two of you ran away from home, that wretched hellhole with those horrible, horrible people, he took care of you while going to the police academy. He graduated early with honours and was invited into the Rune City Homicide Department. I have a question. Yes? It says here that he graduated early. How early are we talking here? Was he a prodigy? Did he just have a knack for solving things? He always had a knack for solving things, I'm guessing. You know, it just runs in the family. We're detectives after all. I mean, that's what the sister told me. Of course. Let's see. He was made detective in only six months, after closing several famous cold cases. Hmm, now that's concerning. What do you mean? Six months? That's awfully a short time. And on top of that, several famous cold cases. Cold cases means that they've been left unsolved because they couldn't find either enough evidence or it just was impossible to solve them. Which means... If he solved a cold case, it's possible that by doing so, resulted in maybe the people that were associated with those cold cases to come back. <gasps> Do you mean like Dr. Rose? Well, yeah, similar to that. If one of the cases just happened to have been Dr. Rose, then that might explain why Dr. Rose suddenly came back after all those years of just not doing anything. Yeah, but I highly doubt it since Lawrence disappeared five years ago and then Dr. Rose only showed up two years. So three years after Lawrence disappeared. Hmm, then that probably isn't the case then. But it is still a possibility that maybe one of those cold cases might have resulted in Lawrence disappearing. So we should keep that in mind? Mm-hmm. And keep an eye and ear out for anything we might hear. Okay, got it. I've written it down. Five years ago he disappeared while investing something in the city. Mm, any ideas why that happened? Because apparently he got a clue or something and it brought him there. Mm, I wonder what that clue was. It's common sense to help people who need it. Mm, maybe he was helping someone. That's just his favorite catchphrase. He just really likes helping people. He's very helpful. Yeah, but being too helpful can also get you in trouble. Do you think he was trying to help someone? Possibly. Hmm. At least I've got kind of an idea about Lawrence by now. I really hope he's okay. So do I. Yeah, he has to be. He made a promise. Yeah, he made a promise. He did? Yeah, he promised his little sister. She promised him that she would stay safe as long as he does. So they have to be okay. I just got a feeling in my soul that he's out there somewhere. I just hope in one piece. What do you mean? Well... 
I'm gonna let you in on a little something that I may or may not know about the Monster Kingdom. Oh? I'm hoping that he wasn't used for any experimentation. There's amalgamations. I hope that doesn't come as a factor. I hope so too. That sounds absolutely terrifying. Hmm. We shouldn't, you know, jump to conclusions just yet. We should write down all our notes and keep stuff in mind. Another thing we learned about was about the Dremeers, right? Yeah, that the Dremeers supply the whole city with crystals, and everything in the city runs on them. But we don't know what the Dremeers got out of that deal. Hmm. It's still too soon to put things together, but at least we got a little bit more information. Also, there's that deal that was going down involving those skeletons you mentioned. Yeah, which I'm pretty sure it was sans with Papyrus coming in afterwards, since Wingerdings tends to not show up straight away. You really gotta introduce me to these skeletons. I guess I can at some point. Oh yay, sexy skellies! Shush, Shell. Hmm, well, I guess that's all for now. Let's head off and see the next chapter. Okay. We'll definitely solve this case. For sure. Now come on, little sister. And so, whom I cannot see or hear. Well, I can kind of see you from time to time. Really? Yeah, but not that well. Anyway, come on. Okay. <laughs>